I never said that I'm going to rush out. We're going to get out. We're getting out of Syria. We're bringing our young, great troops home after so many years. That's President Trump last night now saying there's no rush to pull thousands of American troops out of Syria. A very different message from just a couple of weeks ago. Our boys, our young women, our men, they're all coming back and they're coming back now. We won. Now and then no rush. That abrupt initial decision you just saw prompted the resignation of now former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, who leaves the Pentagon during what the Washington Post calls a period of uncertainty, with new leadership now in place and shifting orders for American troops abroad. Joining me now is Jack Jacobs, retired U.S. Army colonel and Medal of Honor recipient, now an MSNBC military analyst. Joel Rubin is former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Obama administration. Colonel, let me start with that Washington Post period of uncertainty. How would you say things are? How would you describe this period in, in, in the Defense Department? Well, because the new Secretary of Defense has said that he is going to abide by... Um, all the instructions and the general thrust of what Trump likes to do with the military establishment, which is basically to withdraw from our influence around the world, not just in Syria. Uh, and so our perception uh, originally of using our military uh, as a way of projecting our influence and power uh, that's up in the air, and I think there's a great deal of uncertainty in the Pentagon as a result. Yeah, and I think to that point, Joel, uh, today is Patrick Shanahan's first day uh, as acting secretary. The Atlantic spoke to some of his friends uh, and former Boeing colleagues. Ricky Ellison, who's a friend of his and chairman of the Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, says this. He's not going to dictate. He's going to follow what the president's intent is. And they go on. Shanahan, who is succeeding a man Trump reportedly resented for slow walking his directives, is an efficient doer of things. What does that tell you, Joel? Well, Chris, it means we have another yes man in the cabinet and a follow on to the collapse of the Trump national security team in 2018. We lost Mattis, Nikki Haley, Rex Tillerson, H.R. McMaster, all leading individuals who, who largely left because of personality disagreements with President Trump and also a clash with him on his America first ideology. So it looks like that ideology is now going to cement itself further into the uh, that's self-defeating. It's not good for American values or security. And, and a, a yes man, if that's what he wants, he now has it in the Pentagon. And, and we'll see more uh, problems rather than less. So let's go back to your old offices at the State Department. The former special presidential envoy uh, for the campaign to defeat ISIS, Brett McGurk, is now officially gone. Uh, he did this on Twitter. He wrote, Today was my last day at the State Department. I wish my former civilian and military colleagues well as they work under extremely difficult circumstances to protect the interests of our great country. It was a privilege to serve alongside them. What message do you read in that, Joel? Well, I served alongside Brett, and he was a real uh, survivor. He worked across bipartisan administrations. Uh, it's a signal to those on the inside that he uh, he's concerned, and uh, there's really a lack of direction from the White House, uh, as Colonel Jacobs said, uh, uh, regarding our policy uh, in Syria. Uh, where are we going in the Middle East? How are we going to defeat the terrorist organizations? There's a huge apparatus waiting for direction, and with uh, Brett leaving, uh, it's clearly a sign that that direction is not coming. And that's very dangerous. Let's go from big picture to something very specific that we started with, uh, Colonel Jack, which is the president who first said, we're getting out now to we're kind of in no hurry to get out. What's the very real impact of that? Well, the fact that we're getting out at all is the real issue, uh, not how fast we get out. We can't get out right away in any case. But is it's it also a problem impossible. that he seems to be changing tweet by tweet, interview by interview policy? Well, he remembers only the last thing he was told. My guess is that uh, Lindsey Graham and others uh, compelled him through some sort of logic that he can't get out there right away. And if he's going to withdraw, he's got to withdraw over time. That's logistically impossible. And it's also a bad thing to do. But I think we are going to see the withdrawal of American, American forces from, from Syria at a very difficult time. It's going to open up. Uh, the entire area for an expansion of uh, Russia's aims 
and Iran's aims, and at the end of the day, that's the worst thing for American policy in that part of the world, Chris. And, and Joel, overnight, Kim Jong-un addressed North Korea on state television. He says he's ready for more talks, but he also issued a warning, as he often does. He says uh, the U.S. better not test his patience. Of course, it wasn't so long ago that President Trump and, and Kim were shaking hands in Singapore. Uh, how do you look at that relationship going into 2019? Yeah, Chris, that was the number one story out of 2018, the, the summit between President Trump and Kim. But clearly, uh, nuclear insecurity is not gone. We're going to see an increase in it with Russia, with Iran, with North Korea. Uh, there's an incoherence in this diplomacy. And really, President Trump is boxed in. His rhetoric is way out ahead of his policy. And uh, we do need a, a resolution to this, but there's no clarity about what the actual plan is uh, to get a deal closed with North Korea. So we will see if that second uh, summit meeting that he's talking about comes to fruition. Very good to see you, gentlemen. Happy New Year. I appreciate it. Happy New Year. Coming up, Mueller time. Could